What's up, everyone? It's in time for another episode of the Smooth Experience. My name is Seth. My friends call me Silky. And I just wanted to go ahead and talk to you tonight about some crypto updates. Uh, we'd like to talk about crypto news and also investing with passive income on this channel, as well as anything else that interests me. And tonight, what interests me is a few different things. First, I wanted to talk about how quantum computing could end up rocking and changing the world of Bitcoin mining. And basically, something that has always been known that is pretty interesting is that the Bitcoin network is something that can't be hacked uh, just because of its properties of decentralization and about how everybody that downloads the Bitcoin mining application further decentralizes the network, thus making it harder and harder to penetrate. But it's always been known that these are just the computers that are on our desktops right now. And um, it's always been a fact that quantum computing and quantum computers have the ability to actually hack the Bitcoin network. And it's just because of its raw computing power. And it's basically just because these things are so, so, so much more powerful than our average desktop computers currently that it's going to be hard for us to ever match the power of just one quantum computer. So it does have the ability to take over the Bitcoin network just with its raw computing power and how fast it's able to verify transactions. And it could break 256 AES encryption. So that is just something that's always been known. It's something that's pretty interesting just because um, right here, there's an article that talks about how Riz Burke, he's talking about how a quantum computer could completely corner the Bitcoin mining market. And he's right. You know, this is something that we never even like thought would would be something that people would be talking about all the time. But I did realize that, you know, computers used to be so big that they would take up the whole side of the wall of, like, one of these buildings. And now a computer that's way more powerful than one of those computers can fit in, like, the palm of our hand. You know, and they're getting even more and more powerful. So it's just something to think about. And it is possible that, like, you know, if there was a quantum computer that was let loose on the Bitcoin mining network... It could corner the market just because of its raw power. So that's just something to be aware of. And that's something that I'm really worried about, though. And so, yeah, basically, um, some other things that are going on right now is Vitalik Buterin, the person that created Ethereum. He's pretty much a starseed as well. Um, he has pretty much talked about how he has some concerns for ICOs and what his thoughts are and his solutions are on how to scale those. And that's pretty cool because that's something that's coming out by, by a, a reputable name, Fortune.com. And I think that's pretty interesting. Um, oh, yeah. Check this out. DJ Khaled is the latest celebrity to endorse an Ethereum ICO. That's hilarious. Let's see what this dude's getting on. The game is on Paragon. A loft, a silver payment card. Interesting. Use your bitcoins, Ethereum, and more cryptocurrencies in real time across the globe. I just received my titanium central debit card. The central card and central wallet app is the ultimate winner in cryptocurrency debit cards. Powered by central tokens, use your bitcoins across, in real time across the globe. This is a game changer here. Get your CTR tokens now. Right here, we're changing the game. We're the best. Look at me, my bottle is the rock. So DJ Cal is even getting in on the ICO game. That's hilarious. Okay. All right, buddy. You know, it might be actually kind of wise for us to get some CTR. 
Hashtag Crypto Billy. Hashtag We the Best Baby. Hashtag Bless. It might be wise for us to end up getting in the center card. I'm going to check that out. And it's going to definitely be pumping up. Bitcoin prices. Check this out. This is something else that I kind of really wanted to talk about. That's, that's something to be aware of. So Forbes, again, coming into the game. It's interesting how Jamie Dimon and other bankers are trying to like call Bitcoin a fraud. But like Forbes and all these other like really reputable newspapers and all these other companies are writing all of this information about a fraud. It's like, why would you guys be writing all your stuff about a fraud anymore? Unless it's not a fraud. Check this out. Bitcoin price is firmly above 4000 without China. So this is kind of interesting. So like a couple weeks ago, <clears throat> we found out about China. They're going to end up basically turning their, their heads away from cryptocurrencies. They're like trying not to get into it. So I get it. And now what happened is, is they made the price crash by shutting down the exchanges, saying that they're going to monitor the exchanges, and basically shutting down ICOs as well. And so... Who knows how much FUD that is? Fear, uncertainty, and doubt. I also call that F of disinformation. Who knows how much of this is F'd up disinformation? But you know, what's interesting is that they ended up bringing the price from like almost 5K slam down to like 4K. And then uh, JP Morgan comes out, they want to try to end up talking some crap about it. They bring a slam it from 4K down to 3K. So what's interesting is that like that dip happened and the market recovered real fast, right? So now it's actually back up to 4K and it's actually starting and everybody was thinking that now that it's back up to 4K that it's just going to stay that way and Bitcoin will forever be like $4,000 or at least for a little while until like we see some changes in the markets as we see some evolution. But... They didn't think that it would happen this fast. And what's really interesting is now that the price is above $4,000 and China is still turning a blind eye to cryptocurrencies, this is going to be very interesting. So I foresee on this channel, um, we'll end up looking back on this video. It's going to be interesting. But I foresee that China is going to either recognize that they have been not participating in the greatest revolution of our time which is the blockchain technology and by shutting themselves away from Bitcoin and shutting their people away from it that they're basically missing out big time on something that's about to take over the planet and they'll see that you know their economy will start to see that as well because these cryptocurrencies are changing every other economy on the planet that is accepting of them or something else that I see is that they'll probably release their own cryptocurrency, copy the blockchain technology, and imprison people for using blockchains outside of what the government approves. And if that's the case, you know, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be an interesting ride. And I hope that there will be some ICOs at that point that will like allow people to be a lot more free. Because... Actually, I'm not even really worried about it just because like there's so many things that are coming out all the time that like for whatever problem is going to pop up, there's going to be an ICO for it. And so that's going to be beautiful because everybody on the planet can put their money towards that ICO and they'll be able to solve planetary problems, which is something that we haven't been able to do before. We haven't been able to invest that way before because governments have controlled our markets and have controlled the borders on, on our investments. But cryptocurrencies allow those things to just expand across the globe. And so, you know, I have a feeling that already there are some amazing innovations that are popping up for the people in China that are wanting to still partake. And it's just going to keep on going. It's just going to keep on going. If, like, the government does this to its people, then it's just going to end up giving way... It's going to give so many opportunities to other people to fill those gaps to what the people of China are wanting. They want to trade. They want to participate in ICOs. They want to be about this. They want to participate. But it's their government that's holding them back. And, you know, we're going to create some solutions for them that can get around that. So, you know, it depends on who's watching this. But if you're watching this, you have people, you know, you know people in China. Don't worry, man. We got you. We're going to end up getting this taken care of. 
But uh, yeah, this is interesting because the prices are now firmly above 4,000. China's not participating in it, and that's interesting. Aren't they going to come back and do an about face and be like, hey, we're sorry, we want to get in? Or are they just going to end up being like, no, we're not going to get in? Um, or are they just going to end up being like, we're going to create our own blockchain? And the yen is going to end up operating off the blockchain that China approves, the government approves. And that might be the way that they partake in this. And then people can trade against the blockchain in China. Because that way it would still allow those big families to have their power still over the people. And even more power because then they can monitor every transaction. And then what will pop out will be blockchain auditors. People that are going to be auditing the blockchain for transactions that the government doesn't approve of. So, hey, September 28th, 2017. Let's try to put some intention out there to see if we can find some workarounds for this. Just so that we can all participate. You know what I mean? I don't have any problems with anybody, but I just want everybody to be able to participate. Okay, so next thing. This is kind of interesting. By Yuli. They're announcing a pre-ICO. It's starting on 10-10. Uh, on and it's pretty interesting because this is going to end up being kind of like the new video sharing um, solution. And what's pretty interesting is that Viuli is having this upcoming ICO that's starting up. And I foresee, you know, like, is this going to be the new YouTube? Is this going to end up being the new DTube? Look at this. It's pretty cool. They have their own currency that's backing it. They have a good roadmap. Websites looking fresh. But these things could be pumped out at any time right now. And so what's interesting is like, yeah, so we got these three people right here. An advisory board on this. Upload free videos, create channels. See? So it's going to be like the decentralized blockchain version of YouTube. It's going to start in 11 days by Yuli. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. It's whatever. But yeah, take a look at this. I'm going to be interested in this just because, you know, you guys are getting this information right here, right now through video sharing. And I'd much rather have something decentralized because, as you can see, I have an opinion and I like to talk and I like to express myself. I don't want to hold it back, you know. And I feel... This would be a good way to express yourself. You know what I'm saying? All right, next. Here's something new in crypto news. So Venezuela, hey, my heart goes out to you guys right now. If anybody <clears throat> is even able to see this from Venezuela, just know that I'm thinking about you guys every day. And my heart goes out to you guys. What's interesting is that... Um, I'm loving the fact that Venezuela, I'm seeing some news about how Venezuela is starting to try to be open-minded towards Bitcoin, which is, you know, opposite of China. But, like, it's interesting because one Bolivar is now equal to a Satoshi. And that's really beautiful because what they're trying to do is they're trying to end up stopping this inflation because their economy is tanking so bad. That they have so such, such a high inflation that it's going to be so hard for them to end up coming out. And, you know, for you guys to start matching your currency to Bitcoin, I honestly think that's one of the smartest things for you to do. And, you know, your current your country could end up becoming like one of the most profitable countries pretty soon, very fast, just because of this. So, hey, my heart goes out to you guys. I hope that there's more that we can do. And maybe we can come up with some solutions here, blockchain-wise, to help you guys stabilize. Bam, 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 hitting you with the rhymes. All right, check this out. Here's something else that's kind of cool. Triforce. This is, a, this is kind of like a gaming token that's coming out. Triforce is pretty cool, but the reason why I'm talking about it is that, like, it's pretty cool because anybody that gets in on the ICO is actually going to get a free ledger. So I'm all like, this is nice. And by the way, guys, like if you're watching these channels, like these things don't sponsor me. I just, I'm just like, I'm about this stuff, you know? And I just want to give you like the news. So 
Yeah, look at this. In 15 days. Don't miss the pre-sale. Pre-sale opens for 48 hours. Boom. This is pretty cool. So yeah, this will be something that I'm gonna sign up for. Look at how big the team is. The team is big. It's pretty slick. 25% of the ICO completed. Oh, funds released. Release the funds during the different phases. I see. That's kind of nice. It's kind of nice. Let's see if we can find that info about the ledger. this while well, the main ICO will end by December 16th the first 50 pre ICO investors are to get a free ledger nano s so you got to be the first 50 I think there's dang that's a pretty cool way of them doing that they're gonna get a lot of people just sharking right to the ICO like ah gotta get a ledger nano so I think that's pretty cool Giving out a ledger, incentivizing it. So yeah, that's kind of cool. Here's something that's interesting that I just like saw that was popping up here. A bunch of animals have floated from Japan to Oregon on this plastic debris. And that's gonna be interesting because it's saying right here, invasive species. The reason why I brought this up is just because like I wanted to see you know how all these animals that are being brought over from Japan to the US are going to change the ecology and change the environment basically yeah just change the ecosystem of what's going on around there look at this and it's because we need to be cleaning up this trash man maybe there's some good blockchain solutions that's kind of what I'm interested in seeing too is some blockchain solutions that can take care of things like this so that that way like we can just make sure that the ecosystem doesn't get all out of whack too fast i understand that nature is going to have to do its thing but like this stuff wouldn't have come over here if it wasn't for the plastic that we that we had created so here's the last thing that i wanted to talk about that i'm out this is pretty interesting right cbs's showtime was caught mining crypto coins in viewers web browsers so I think this is pretty interesting is that it's asking right here who placed the JavaScript code on two primetime dot coms so far it's a mystery so I don't know if this is completely true or not with what we're getting here but it's pretty interesting because um, multiple sites are talking about it and they're talking about how Showtime has been finding some script in its site some JavaScript where whenever you're on Showtime.com, it's actually using your CPU to mine cryptocurrencies. And that cryptocurrency is going to um, one of these sites. It's going to, or it's not, it's going to one of these wallets. And we don't know who, we don't know where it is. But yeah, this script is able to mine Monero, a cryptocurrency similar to Bitcoin, but much more anonymous. And the Pirate Bay, it was recently caught doing the same thing. While you were on its site, it was it was injecting JavaScript into your computer and then sipping on your CPU and then trying to mine little Satoshis as you're using its site. And that's what's interesting because for Showtime, people stay on that site for hours, you know. And so that's pretty interesting that these guys, they ended up creating some code. Look at this. Here it is. If window location protocol... Coinhive.com Mine.javascript Set throttle to 0 0.97 Yo, that's crazy Let's check out Coinhive What have you guys got going down? And see, watch 
I wonder if this is gonna make my my computer start going. A crypto miner for your website. Oh my gosh. Have you, oh my gosh, we're gonna end up having to have like virus scanners and system monitors that are going to have to monitor for these things going forward. Monetize your business with your user's CPU power, huh? Crazy. Flexible JavaScript API. Nice. My hash rate seems low. Why Monero? Monero's different. It was designed well to it was designed to run well in consumer CPUs. Oh man, that's crazy. It runs with about 65% of the performance of a native miner for an Intel i7 CPU. A native miner would get about 140 hashes. 100 this you see they're getting 140 hashes off of everybody's i7s. Those are pretty ubiquitous on the planet right now. So Oh man, I wonder how much. Oh look, implementing a reward system on your site where users have to keep mining for longer durations is far more feasible. With just 10 to 20 active miners on your site, you can expect a monthly revenue of about 0 0.3 Monero or 28 bucks with just 10 to 20 people. I wonder how many people are streaming Showtime at any given time. These dudes were making out with a mint. And I wonder how many other companies are doing that too. So that's just something I wanted to go ahead and show you guys. Is that, you know, there's some pretty interesting things that are going on in the internet. In the, in the crypto space. And, you know, going forward, you may want to end up looking at some of the JavaScript in the sites that you're visiting. What I would say is that if, you have, if you're visiting any sites that seem to be really resource heavy and it shouldn't be like even these even like showtime and places like that like hbo and stuff like that they should be able to stream to your computer pretty easily without demanding too many resources so here's something that's good for you guys to know is that like if you're on a mac you got to go to activity monitor and if you're on something else you would have to end up going to just if you're on something else, then you'd end up having to do something different. So, like, Activity Monitor, there's an equivalent to this on Windows. But if, you're, you, if your system and your user is using up a whole lot of CPU right here, and all your memory is being taken up by this, by whenever you're um, streaming, just know that, like, you might want to end up taking a look at some of the code that's on that website. See if they got some of this mining that's happening. And maybe take a look and keep an eye out for some antivirus software in the future that also includes website scanning to prevent from this type of stuff happening. Because honestly, guys, if this is happening, you know, Showtime could end up facing a lawsuit for damaging people's computers because these mining scripts they wear CPUs down way faster than they need to because they're verifying transactions on the network. So they're wearing down computers and it's good for you to end up knowing that just so that, that way your computer, I want, you, I want your computer to last as long as possible. Whatever device you're using, I want it to last as long as possible. And this could apply to, to mobile too. You know, this may not just be for this. It could be on mobile. So check that stuff. Check Showtime. Um, yeah. If there's anything else that you end up getting value out of this, you know, like, comment, subscribe, do the things, and I will see you guys in the next episode.